Welcome back to the St. Sebastian YouTube channel. If you didn't know, St. Sebastian is the patron saint to invoke against contagious diseases. So in his honor, I thought today we would take a look at four paintings here at St. Sebastian Parish in Akron of the martyrdom of St. Sebastian done by four wildly different artists. They are two men, two women, painting when they were anywhere from their 30s to their 80s. They use completely different styles to tell the exact same story, and they are all painted within the last 10 years. So in order to familiarize you with the subject of these paintings, I'm going to tell you very quickly about the life of St. Sebastian. And he was alive around the year 256 and died in 288. And, and kind of a reverse story of St. Francis of Assisi, who left off being a knight in order to serve Christ more closely, St. Sebastian left the comfort of his home in the countryside and went to the heart of Rome to become a soldier to serve Christ more closely. At the time, Diocletian was persecuting Christians, and if he found out that you were a Christian, you could either be arrested and tortured or even put to death. Sebastian used his position as a Roman soldier of the Praetorian Guard to help Christians. Even when they were facing death themselves, he went in and encouraged them to stay with the faith through the final hour just in the same way that Christ did. Of course, eventually, Diocletian found out that one of his best and brightest soldiers was himself a Christian, and thinking that he had been betrayed, had Sebastian tied to a post and shot with arrows. Thinking that he left him for death, he was found for by Saint Irene, who brought him to her place and had him nursed back to health. Now, you would think that Sebastian, after gone, going through all this and proving to God how much he loved him to the point of even the laying down of his own life, might take life kind of easy right now. This would be a, a very acceptable end of the story, but it wasn't. He returned to Diocletian, which we will see in just a moment. Come with me. So despite the urging of St. Irene, Sebastian feels that his mission is not yet done, and he goes out to confront Diocletian on the Appian Way outside the walls of Rome and to chastise him for treating Christians so poorly. You can see that here we have Diocletian up in the corner seeming to recover from his shock that the man he thought he had put to death is alive. We have the soldier here, one guy's pointing, hey, look, it's him. And this soldier is just turning and trying to figure out what's going on. He's grabbing for his sword, and he's turned so quickly that the tassels on his uniform are kind of flaring out. After this, Sebastian is clubbed to death, and as I like to tell particularly the sixth grade boys, his broken, bleeding body is thrown into the gutter for the glory of God. Now, but seriously, the reason that we have him as our patron saint is St. Sebastian was so devoted and had such steadfast faith and love, he would not permit anything to get between him and that which he loved, or him whom he loved, God, right? And so we use him as our patron saint to help us in our Christian life. But usually it's from the early attempt on his life that we see paintings. And it's those that I'm going to share with you right now. Come over this way. The earliest depictions of St. Sebastian, he was an older man with white hair and a white beard. Sebastian became younger throughout the centuries, finally in the Renaissance, sometimes appearing as a very young youth. This was probably more out of an artist's desire to depict the human form. With that in mind, we'll take a look at our paintings that we have here. This is the martyrdom of St. Sebastian. It was done by Mr. Eric Armusic of Hamburg, Pennsylvania. Eric was born in 1973 and grew up on a, in a northeastern coal region of Pennsylvania. His hometown was a landscape riddled with the depression of post-industry. With the community lacked in public art and museums, it made up for with churches on each city block. It was there that Eric developed his appreciation for church art. His focus is on classical figurative uh, art reminiscent of the old masters. Eric is married to Rebecca, and they have three beautiful children. 
This painting of the four that you'll be seeing today, I think, works best liturgically. If you know anything about the story of St. Sebastian and you walk into a church, there would be no mistaking who this is and what is going on right here. We know it's St. Sebastian. There's the post behind. Here is his Roman garb off to the side, and we see the arrows. Interestingly enough, even though his uh, painting is very realistic. There is a lot of symbolism going on in here to connect what St. Sebastian went through with what Christ went through. If you look at his Roman garb kind of tossed off to the side here, it reminds us of Jesus being stripped of his garments just before he was crucified. The post to which St. Sebastian is tied kind of looks like the bottom of the cross where Jesus was crucified. As if we panned out more and the frame was bigger, we might see Jesus' feet uh, on the bottom of the cross. There are five arrows reminiscent of the five wounds of Christ. Fortunately, there was someone who didn't aim very well and their arrow went into the ground over here, leaving us with just those five symbolic arrows. Notice also, the sun is setting over here in the west. Sebastian's face should be in shadow to us, but it's not. There's obviously another light source here. So what's going on? It's fairly obvious that with this first volley of arrows, Sebastian fell to his knees. But notice, he's not on his knee anymore. By the muscle that's being activated in his thigh, we see he's lifting himself up and this knee is being raised up. The look on his face is a transition from pain and shock to one of hope, perhaps, or of some beautiful vision which he is seeing. And we have another light source coming from the east, shining down on him, and he's looking up. So it's almost as if this connection between Jesus and God and his great love of us and Sebastian's great love of God and conversely to us are just becoming most uh, uh, visible to him right in this moment, letting us know also that Sebastian is telling us even in these moments of tragedy, even in moments when things seem to be going their worst, even God can bring goodness, or God can even bring goodness out of that, that our mission is not failed, that perhaps it is just now reaching its fulfillment. All right, three more paintings. Come with me. This next one might surprise you. This piece is entitled, A Candy Heart Pierced by a Candy Arrow, or A Pop Meditation on the Sweet Suffering of St. Sebastian. It's a bit more fun of a piece, but it is also a great piece for affecting our modern culture. About the artist, Mr. Anthony Master Matteo used to be a member of this parish and has since moved to Talmadge where he has a family uh, and continues his work as a painter. His style is largely trompe l'oeil, a style that typically tricks the brain into thinking it is seeing a 3D image, not a painting. He uses it, in his own words, to create an optical illusion of depth, and he also uses a myriad of references from popular culture, philosophy, and literature. So let's take a look at what he's doing here. Of course, when you see a heart like this, you might be inclined to think of love. Think of the heart beating out of a cartoon character's chest. And the arrow is a harmless looking one that might be on a sign that you would find at a Boy Scout cap. We understand from the title that this candy heart, which brings to mind the little candies passed around on St. Valentine's Day, and the arrow then can be reminiscent of Cupid's arrow that when it strikes you, makes you fall hopelessly and hopelessly in love. Next, because of the title, we know that this painting is connected to St. Sebastian. In his great love for God, he was willing to risk all and head for Rome, where the persecution against the church was the greatest. It was love of God and of his fellow Christians that drew him there. And if it's knowing the story of St. Sebastian, you know that when he was found out, he was tied to a stake and shot with arrows. Further, the colors the painter has chosen are the colors of St. Sebastian Parish. Now, all of the themes of St. Sebastian, his love of God, his story, and being patron of this parish all come together to give new meaning to something as secular 
as a candy heart. Here is a way to baptize secular symbolism and to remind us of God. I hope that this coming February, when you eat those little candy hearts, it'll mean more to you than just being a piece of mindless candy and a self-indulgent sweet tooth. What wonders we could work if we start taking control of the symbolic language of our culture. This painting is also called The Martyrdom of St. Sebastian. It was painted by Mother Mary Thomas, a poor Claire of perpetual adoration in the conversion of St. Paul Shrine in downtown Cleveland. Mother began painting in high school in Appleton, Wisconsin. She later became one of the first women to study at the Chicago Institute of Art and then studied under various other artists, particularly the Mexican muralist David Sequeiros, which is why her style is so reminiscent of the Mex Mexican muralist movement. I think this painting works best as a teaching tool, especially when we bring the kids over to the school. Where the art music painting was very realistic and symbolic, Mother Mary Thomas's figures are much more imaginative and the details of the story are much more literal. What was symbolized in the art music painting is made concrete here. So let's take a look. Obviously, once again, you know the story of St. Sebastian already. Here he is, tied to the stake, stripped of his garments, and the arrows being shot into him. So that's the story that we saw in the last painting. But what made, makes the story, continuing story of St. Sebastian much more concrete here? We don't have to imagine that he is uh, connected to Christ or that the stake is like the cross because with the way Mother overlays images, we can make out the cross here to which Sebastian is tied. And we can see the club that will be used later for his martyrdom being placed close to the spear that pierced Christ's side at his death. And here is the spear again, riding right along the first attempt on the life of St. Sebastian. And we don't have to just imagine that Sebastian loved Jesus or that their stories are connected. Here we see Jesus himself embracing Sebastian and what he is doing. And Sebastian, with a peaceful look on his face, seems to be leaning back against the Lord much the same way that St. John leaned against Jesus at the Last Supper. All right, let's take a look at another one. Finally, we have the icon of St. Sebastian, painted by Sister Ileana of the Christ the Bridegroom Monastery in Burton, Ohio. Sister Ileana's name is the Ukrainian spelling of the feminine form of Saint Elias the prophet. She explained that the Lord placed this name on her heart on the Feast of Pentecost. She desired to be caught up in the flames of God's love as Saint Elias was. She began painting icons a number of years ago to help support their young monastery. Fortunately, I was able to have Saint Sebastian on her list early as it was commissioned by the Saint Sebastian bridge flights. Now I think there's a waiting list of a number of years. Icons are most closely associated with Eastern Catholics and can run in contrast to some artistic sensibilities of us in the West. They are not simply paintings per se, but tools for contemplation. Even the work itself is a prayer. A true icon is born of prayer and fasting and human action. Most icons one can buy are manufactured, manufactured en masse, substitutes for real icons. Some of the things to notice about an icon is an exaggeration and the face. Icon's proportions are not true to life. This is because an icon is not interested in recreating earthly images, but with transmitting spiritual truths. When praying with an icon, which help us, helps us focus on prayer, you are invited into heaven to contemplate through the saint's eyes the graces and glory of God. In this icon, we can see Sebastian fully clothed, post-martyrdom. In iconography, blue represents heavenly things, things not of earth. Sebastian is in heaven where he intercedes for us. 
Red symbolizes things of earth and the power of the resurrection. Sebastian passed from his mortal bodies to his heavenly one. He holds in his hands the arrows of the first attempt of his martyrdom. And notice once again, there are five for the five wounds of Christ. In his right hand, he holds the cross of Christ. This is how this artist connects the martyrdom of St. Sebastian with the passion of Christ. Icons are always silent. That is, their mouths are never open. They speak to us silently. Here, Sebastian contemplates the arrows of his torture while holding firmly to the cross of Christ. What is he saying to us? It is possible tonight to unite your suffering to the suffering of Christ, to his passion. With God, there can be victory even in seemingly earthly defeat, to be brave, or to think on the joy that you will have in remaining faithful to the one who loves you so deeply while hiding from God and from that love and from that witness in the world would make life easier for you. Or what is he trying to tell you in particular? Come and visit St. Sebastian and see what he has to tell you. All right, one more painting. Come with me. And so there you go. Four different paintings using wildly different means and for different purposes of bringing the Christian message out to the world. It's also why it's so important for us as Catholics to support artists. As the saying goes, he who pays the fiddler calls the tune. If we do not support our artists, other people will, and they will hone their uh, artistic skills on other topics. Consider commissioning an artist to produce an original piece of art for you or your parish. Try to avoid, if you can, ordering art out of a catalog. I know that it is very difficult and sometimes dangerous to do so, and I could tell you some interesting stories about that, but I also know that he who dares magnificently can expect magnificent rewards. Because of these paintings, I had something to share with you today, and I know that you have just seen something that you won't see anywhere else. You also are aware that now that these paintings are still capable of being completed, as all of these have been completed within the last 10 years. I can also invite you to come to St. Sebastian particularly during the month of January, January 20th being the feast day of St. Sebastian, when all of these paintings and more are displayed in our church so that we can honor our patron saint. Until next time, this is Father Valenchuk saying God bless you and St. Sebastian, pray for us. <laughs>